So it's been a really long time since I've been able to make a YouTube video, um, but just want to let everybody know that that's definitely going to change. And I really want to thank all my subscribers out there. Your support um, makes a huge difference. Um, so I'm going to make a video here to update you on a paint organizer that I've been working on. Um, but as a preview, this is a train piece that I've been working on and I have videotaped every moment of this entire build and I'm currently in the process of editing together all the details for everything that has been built on this so far and obviously this is this is not a complete piece um, there'll be chipped paint on the pipes there'll be um, probably some sort of copper effect up here on the vent um, I'll show you how to make this cool little vent up here um, a whole new way to do rivets on this. You can see there's two types of rivets. There's the large rivets around the edge and then I've got on the door there are some very small rivets um, and I'm, I'm so excited about the rivets I think I might just make a video just showing you how to do that because um, you can use them on your miniatures as well. So um, anyway keep a lookout for this coming so I will show you exactly how to build this. Like I said every single detail but let's get to the organizer. So, um, as you guys may or may not know, one of the ways that I support my hobby is I build these paint organizers for folks, and they're usually kind of a toolbox shape and about a toolbox size, and I just had a huge um, challenge to overcome. So I had a gentleman who is using um, the Vallejo primer, which is the same stuff I use. Um, he's using dropper bottles, um, the model air dropper bottles. Um, he's got P3 stuff he's using, and then he's got the old GW stuff and the new GW stuff, which is pretty much the same paint pot except with the new lid. And then he didn't he didn't point it out, but I know eventually he's probably going to want to maybe use the alcohol-based stuff from Vallejo as well. So the challenge there was coming up with an organizer that I could use all different sizes of paint pots for. And so the toolbox itself is going to have six of these shelf systems in it. So this is this is going to be modular so that um, you could take this off if you want. And then as you can see, your, your paint pots just fit in there. So this one is set up for um, dropper bottles. So you can fit six across and then three tall. Um, but here's the problem. So let's say you don't want dropper bottles in there and you want to use the GW stuff, well, you got all kinds of wasted space here, and your big dropper bottles might not even fit in there. So what I did was, on the sides here, so this is a side piece, this is essentially this right here, um, what you'll notice is the supports for the shelf move up and down. So you can put as many shelves in here as you want, and you can control the spacing. You can see the shelves come out. So you can put um, your primer in the bottom, and then another shelf will go here. And then you might be able to put your, your GW stuff. So anyway, one of the cool things is, so if you look in the end, see there's a T-shaped track. So the way this works is you just take one of these square nuts, and this goes in the track. And then you get the shelf support and you take a screw and just screw it into the little square nut. Right? And you do it on both sides and then what you'll end up with is this little bracket that moves up and down. Um, so here on the actual shelf, this is the finished shelf, um, here's the little holes in the bottom. For the square nut so that just, just take the little square nut and it slides right in the hole in the bottom and it's kind of cleverly hidden so you'll never really see it on the bottom so people kind of um, it's all integrated um, and then since this whole thing's a toolbox and there'll be six of these um, and you'll be taking it to your hobby shop and moving it around your house there's a cover that goes on the front of each one of these um, and I think I might try and do this out of a clear plastic or like a bronze type plastic. So this is going to be cool. So when the covers hold everything in place, um, but believe it or not, the shelves were a challenge. So one thing, I didn't want the shelves to fall out. And you can see the shelves, they don't fall out. 
And the way I accomplish that is there's these metal strips that go down the back of each one of these um, paint organizer caddies. And then I went ahead and bonded magnets in it. And the magnet's flat. It's recessed in it. So after you figure out your height that you want, then you just go ahead and take the shelf and you can put it in there. And one of the things I didn't want the dropper bottles that go on the bottom, I wanted them to have the, the lip. So you just take the shelf and it goes in the very bottom there. And you can see it clicks in rare earth magnets. It ain't going anywhere. So that's a very cool thing. Um, but then the shelves, there was another challenge there because the privateer press stuff and the GW stuff, the bottom of the bottle is bigger and the dropper bottles are smaller. So if you look at the side of the shelf, it's designed for the dropper bottle to fit just fine. But if you go to install the privateer press stuff, you can see it doesn't fit in this groove. And the same thing is true for the GW stuff. So I wanted the paint pots to sit in there perfect so this groove has been designed in such a way that you just take this filler piece and it sits in the bottom of the shelf. So if this was in the rack, the shelf goes in and then you take the filler piece and it just goes up top here. And what you see is it fills it out perfect. So there's without the filler piece and then you put the filler piece in. So now your P3 stuff sits flat and your GW stuff sits flat. And this is designed so that there's a little bit of tension when you install the GW stuff to kind of keep it from, from sliding around. It works really good with the new pots. So those magnets also help hold the pots in place. Um, so this is this has turned out super cool. I've got all the pieces cut for these. They're turned out to be way more pieces. Um, if you guys have seen my stuff before, you can see I use um, dado joints and rabbit joints on the boxes. So everything's nice woodworking techniques here. Um, but one of the other things I wanted to point out, so there'll be three of these on each side of the toolbox. And they'll fold in and be stored. And then when you go to paint, they fold out. So this is kind of the, the prototype. This is in as clean. It's got some extra pieces glued on here because um, to make this fold out was a little bit of a challenge. So this doesn't line up perfect, but don't, don't pay attention to that. So I got these hinges on the side, and then there's a metal strip, and then there's a magnet. And so when this is on the side of the toolbox, when you go to paint, it will fold out. And as you can see, the magnet pulls it all in place. And on each side, actually, so when it's, when it's all done, there will actually be three toolboxes together, or three caddies, and then they'll all fold out. So this one will fold out like this, and then this one will fold out like this. And you're looking at the three caddies from the front of the toolbox. And as you can see, I intentionally use hinges that come apart. So this can be sitting on your toolbox and then let's say you decide you're going to go paint um, up in the kitchen or you just want to run down to the hobby store and you don't need all your paint. Then you just pop off pop off the section that you need. Remember that it's got a cover on it just like this one. So then you can just toss this in your bag and go down to the hobby store, do your painting. And then when you get back, you just put the hinges together and put it back on the main body of the toolbox. And the magnet, the reason why I did the magnet was so that when it's sticking off the side of the toolbox, so it'll be like two wings, one off of each side. Um, it won't move around on you and, and want to wobble it'll all stay perfectly straight off the side of the toolbox so anyway, these will be on the side of the toolbox and then the main body of the toolbox will be in the middle and you'll have all the drawers um, to hold brushes i'm going to do a little custom um, drawer just to hold the brushes so that the tips of the bristles don't get damaged um, but this is definitely the coolest uh, method i've come up with to store paint so far um, so let me know if what you guys think, you know, give me your tips, give me your suggestions. Um, and I am building 
two of these. So one is for the commission, and the second um, I'll just sell you know somebody who's who wants to buy one. So if you're interested, um, Jason at Tinker Terrain, and just shoot me off an email, and I'll let you know when it's finished and what the um, what the final price is going to be. So I, I tend to kind of put more into these than people ask for, and, and everybody seems happy. So um, anyway, thanks for watching, and please subscribe if you haven't already.